When it comes to sound quality, you are hearing 50% of your room and 50% of your equipment. Hello everyone, I hope you are having a great time. Today I'm reviewing this Bowers & Wilkins 606 S2 Anniversary Edition Bookshelf speaker. This one retail for $900 for a pair of these and they are featuring probably one of the best mid-range and bass driver that money can buy in this price range. Bowers and Wilkins continuum bass driver and mid-range driver that they've been using. So overall fit and finish and build quality is as good as you can have in this price point. Nicely texture, uh, black color, overall cabinet design, mid-grade uh, acceptable quality in this price range. As usual, Bowers and Wilkins, it has the, uh, the high quality binding post. Probably they are one of the strongest binding posts that you can have in any price point. Probably some of you may not know because the reason I started this review channel is a lot of my friends lives in different country. Although we share the same hobby, but they don't have the ability to audition and experience all the speakers that we have here in the United States. Overall sound quality, it has the powers and working sound signature all over. Doesn't matter, you pair them with any equipments. I started out with this, my PMA SX11 and Sony HAP Z1 ES, and I switched over to P3 Nova 300, and I even switched over to this Lux G and SMS DA9 Class D M. They are very well responded to pairing components. But sound demonstration you will hear in this video is sound demo of pairing with this PMA SX11 and the Sony HAP Z1 ES music server because I find it to be most rewarding, most high resolution and most spacious sound pairing with this combination. So other are okay but not, not as good as I would like to be. But when I pair with this uh, SMS uh, DA9, the sound stage depth is really good for the price. I mean it has a nice depth to it but it lacks your yeah, overall refinement and spaciousness and space between the notes compared to this setup. So most of my music listening, all the artists that I have live experience, you know, I went to their live concerts such as Dido or Shade or even like Adele or Gwen Estefani, such, you know, those kind of artists because I want to make sure they are reproducing sound as accurately as they record it. So Shadi voices are accurately reproduced, Gwen S. Fani voices are, as I remember from live concert, and Dido and Adele as well. The Adele voices are so real. I mean, probably one of the best in this price point that I can enjoy listening to her voice. Try it. I mean, for Skyfall, uh, intro is incredible. Why spacious sound with your very good dynamic range, meaning it has a really nice depth on the overall stereo image. <laughs> Placement is very simple, not much of toe in, just a little bit of toe in. It's about a little over six feet apart and like more than three feet behind the speakers. I sit like 14 feet away from here. As you can see here in room response measurement, it doesn't have the uh, particular brighter region overall frequency range. I measure it from one speaker from one meter. Overall frequency response is very nice, better than previous generation. I mean overall sound quality compared to previous generations of the 600 series such as I had a 607 and I also had a 707. They are both very uh, forward sounding in upper frequency range. This one is not as bad. But it has the Bowers and Wilkins sound signature, such as the a little overly pronounced upper frequency range. But it's not a fully detached from overall frequency spectrum. 
a little bit exaggerated frequency in the upper frequency range, but not unbearable. As I mentioned before, what you hear in your room and your sound is 50% of your room and 50% of your component. Those are the things that we have to consider. So in this room, I don't experience unbearable, you know, super bright sound signature as someone mentioned. But what I experience is typical Bowers and Wilkins sound signature. To describe that, it has a nice and vivid spatial sound stage, very wide, probably the widest stereo image and soundscape that you may experience in this price point compared to such as a CAF Q350 or Dali Oberon series or even Wafte Evo 4.2 and those kind of speakers. Dynamic range that it can take you up to 110 dB, no problem. This is a, probably one of the best power handling toe-to-toe -to -toe with CAF Q350 when it's come to power handling of the speakers in this price point. Probably this one has yeah, a little better bass response, a little bit tighter bass response compared to those speakers. So volume control knob around like 11 o'clock position will get me around like 100 to 105 decibel of loudness in this room using this amplifier. They still retain the, uh, the nice sound stage and soundscape without you know dismantling itself but it lacks the uh, refinement there goes refinement i will always say because that level of loudness this 606 s2 were able to retain the overall nice soundscape without you know falling apart but I will love more refinement in upper frequency range. Bass response, mid bass, upper bass, still very good. But upper mid range to high frequency lacks the uh, refinement and it can get bright as well. So that kind of loudness. When I play in low level music listening, such as around 50 to 55 decibel of loudness, so that will be around like seven o'clock position on this amplifier. I have no problem listening to any kind of music. Bass quality, probably one of the best in this price point. It has yet very nice and articulate bass with good instrument separation, but not as good as the uh, Big Brother uh, 706 S2 that I have. It has the uh, nice pronounced bass quality with very engaging sound signature. Upper mid-range to mid-range transition is seamless and nicely transitioned. So my normal music listening is from around like 70 to 80 decibel loudness in between. So that level of loudness, I have no problem listening to them regardless of what music I throw them. But when I play the uh, DST files and all that high quality music I have, it can totally show the uh, quality of the music and I can create three dimension uh, like soundscape, no problem. It has a uh, very nice stereo image. I can walk around in this room, it still provide wide and spacious sound. In my opinion, weakest point of this speaker is finicky with pairing component because it does need high current amplification to sound the best. Like this kind of uh, budget amplifier and all that, it was able to deliver decent sound quality, but they are nowhere near be able to produce and bring the best out of them. When you listen into the cymbal strikes and rolling cymbals, it has nice airiness to it. High frequency can be a bit tiring sometimes. It all depends on your room and it depends on recording as well. But overall experience, I don't see any major negative. It has a nicely reproduced sound quality with authoritative uh, very pronounced bass and mid-range to upper mid-range sound reproduction. Upper mid-range to high frequency, it just lacks yeah, a little bit of refinement. Otherwise, it can go toe to toe with any speaker in this price point. It can even outperform most of them in terms of overall bass quality, not only the bass quantity. That is the overall sound signature of this Bowers and Wilkins 606 S2. I can totally easily 
recommend it to you to try them out. You may end up loving them in overall price and performance and quality that you can have. Just a friendly reminder is to pair them with nice and neutral component or a little bit warmer side of component. They will get the job done and please be aware of your surrounding such as your room because most of the bright sound that comes from your room, not only the speaker. So that's it my friend, that is my quick experience and review with this 606 S2 speakers. Thank you for watching and happy listening.